Are you in the market for a 7.3 Power Stroke? Well, stay tuned because we're doing a comparison video between the old body style and the Super Duty 7.3. Well guys, for starters, looking at these two trucks, I'm going to get a couple things out of the way. Certainly, you can see the body styles are both very different. Now, to give you all an idea, the two vehicles that we're comparing here today is my friend's 2002 Ford F250. This is a crew cab short bed two-wheel drive truck. A very nice vehicle, if you ask me. It's got a little over 260,000 miles on it. And then, of course, there's my truck, the old body style 1997 7.3 Power Stroke. Now, it's a crew cab long bed four-wheel drive, so certainly... There's that difference there. The O2 Super Duty is two-wheel drive, whereas the old body style line is, of course, four-wheel drive. Now, the other thing is my truck has 354,000 miles on it, so quite a few more miles, but they're 7.3s. They're still good to go. Now, the O2 Super Duty is completely bone stock down to the air intake, whereas my truck, if y'all have been keeping up with my channel, you know I've got a few aftermarket things on this. Now my truck's running stock tuning. I do have an aftermarket downpipe, a full-on 4-inch exhust, and a Napa 6637 air intake. All right, so let's start off with the Super Duty over here. Now certainly you can see it's got a lot more modern styling on this. Now my friend's truck does have an aftermarket grill and an aftermarket hood on it as well, so that's a little bit changes aesthetically. But you definitely see it's a bit more of a bigger body, I think, than the old body style has. That's just one of the characteristics of the Super Duty. I think the bodies themselves are a little bit tougher built than the old body style just because it's got a lot more plastic, modern plastics and things of that sort on it. And just overall, it's a little bit bigger in the cab and everything of that sort. Now we turn over to the OBS truck. Now this definitely has a bit more of a classic styling. You can see quite a bit more chrome all the way around it. You've got chrome door handles and things of that sort. And that's because the body style of the OBS actually originated back in the 1983 year model, or basically the only thing they've changed between 83 and 97 was pretty much the front end of it. Everything else basically looks the same. They did also update the interiors and things of that sort as well. But certainly a bit more of the classic look. And a lot of the decision comes down to whether you want a Super Duty or, or a OBS, it comes down to what you prefer to look wise. Now I personally like the look of the older truck over the Super Duty and that's why I chose to drive an OBS and also generally you can find an OBS a little bit cheaper than you can say a comparable Super Duty. Now of course we can't forget about the interior of these two trucks. Now both of these, the OBS and the Super Duty are both, these models here specifically are more the luxury models and of course both have this tan interior which I really like. So the OBS actually cool thing is that it actually shares the pretty much the same interior as the F-150 of the same era and the Bronco. In fact, the dashboards are interchangeable. Taking a look over here, this is the back seat of this OBS truck. Now, I actually think that the OBS does have a little bit more room in, in the interior, especially in the back seat in particular, compared to the Super Duty. But if there is a little difference, it's just slight. And it's probably not in terms of any measurement. It's just more of how it feels because the OBS truck is generally a little bit more of a, a lighter truck. I say it's got less interior on it. It's a little bit thinner bodied, thinner framed and all that. Now I take a look here of this Lariat Super Duty 7.3. Certainly a very nice interior in here as well. It does actually smell a little bit different being that it is newer. I think it's made a little bit newer plastic and things of that sort. Now one cool thing about the gauge cluster that I like about on the Super Duty over the 7.3 is this transmission temperature thing over here. Now that right there is really useful for towing to keep an eye on transmission temperature so that you don't certainly blow up your transmission whereas my OBS does not have that and it doesn't have an option for it so certainly need to uh, I eventually hope to get a transmission fluid temperature sensor for the OBS as well. Take a look at the back seat of the Super Duty. Really nice tear back here as well. Now this also does have leather in here which is certainly a very fancy feature to each his own, I guess. All right, well, enough for the outside. Let's go ahead and see if we can pop the hoods and see what they have underneath and see how they differ. All right, so certainly looking at the engine bay of the 
OBS truck. You can see it's it's actually not terribly complicated in here. You can definitely see my aftermarket 6637 air intake. I still got the 7.3 turbo cover on it and everything as well. Now if we go ahead and look at the Super Duty, you can see there's a heck of a lot more going on underneath the hood here. And they do definitely look quite a bit different. All right, before we get too much into the differences between these two trucks, let's go ahead and talk about what is the same between them. So certainly these are both 7.3 power stroke diesel engines. They're both 7.3 liter hydraulically actuated unit injection system and they both displace 444 cubic inches. They're both based off the International T444E engine. Now as far as I know, the engine blocks themselves are very similar. I do believe that the Super Duty 7.3's blocks were a little bit beefed up somewhere in the middle of the valley to reduce noise and things of that sort. Not 100% certain about that, but as far as I know, the two engines are identical in terms of bolt patterns and things of that sort. Now, certainly the front covers are a bit different. So for instance, here on the Super Duty, we have the alternator here on the driver's side. Whereas on the OBS, we have the alternator over on the passenger side and my AC compressor is on the driver's side. So that part's flipped. So certainly the front covers are a bit different in that regard. But when it boils down to it, the blocks are nearly identical. Now there is some debate as to whether or not you can swap the two engine blocks between the two. Now I will give you this piece of advice here. You can swap a OBS engine into a Super Duty, but generally not the other way around unless you take some necessary precautions. And the reason for that has to do with the fuel system. So the Super Duty 7.3 has an electronic fuel system. It has an electronic fuel pump. Whereas the OBS has that mechanical lift pump down there in the valley. So that being said, there's actually a camshaft lobe on the old body style 7.3 that's used to actuate that pump there that the Super Duty just doesn't have. Now in fact, the 7.3 block on the Super Duty does actually have a little hole where the pump would go. However, that's actually got a plug in it. And so this, of course, doesn't have that mechanical lift pump. Okay, now let's see if we can start talking about the differences between these two trucks. Now first off, one of the biggest differences that you can see coming out of it is that the Super Duty has these pipes coming out of it. And that's because it actually has an intercooler, whereas the old Wally Style 7.3 does not have an intercooler. Now the intercooler is mostly installed in term, in, for the Super Duty in terms of emissions. It helps lower the NOx emissions and things of that sort. Back during the old body style era, that really wasn't an issue, and so they didn't come with intercoolers. That helps it be a little bit simpler in the engine bay as well. Now also on the turbocharger side, it's a little bit different as well. Now the Super Duties have a waste-gated turbocharger. So you can see right in there, there's actually a little bit of a rod that you can see coming up between the turbine housing and the compressor housing. Now that there is the wastegate actuator that the OBS does not have. So here on the OBS, you can see there's a clear absence of any sort of a wastegate actuator just because it is completely non-wastegated. Instead, the OBS 7.3 has essentially, you can think about it, having a much larger turbine housing. Now, the downside to that is that it does have a significant increase in turbo lag compared to the Super Duty, which makes it a little bit slower and less drivable overall. But the Super Duty, with that tighter turbine housing, pretty much needs to have the intercooler to help control exhaust gas temperatures because the OBS actually is able to flow more air on the top end, generally speaking, because it has the larger area ra ratio turbine housing. Other difference to note here is that the Super Duty 7.3 actually has a larger intake plenum going down into the valley. So it's got three inch intake plenum all the way, whereas the OBS has two and a half inch, a little bit smaller, but that's because it doesn't flow quite as much air and that's really not needed. Now we start jumping into some of the bigger differences that has to do with the fuel system itself. So certainly the Super Duty 7.3 is actually a little bit quieter because this actually has split shot injectors, which means it gives a little bit of a diesel shot at first and then all of it at once. So what that does is it actually quiets it down a little bit at idle and it also helps with emissions a little bit, whereas the OBS has a single shot that just dumps in all the fuel right at once. Now also on the injector side, the Super Duties have much larger flowing injectors. The Super Duty is actually rated about 135 cc injector flow rate, and that's cubic centimeters per minute, whereas the OBS is only rated at about 90 cc. So that means that you have a lot more power potential in stock form on the Super Duty compared to the OBS. And also, the Super Duty has the intercooler to handle higher exhaust gas temperatures versus the OBS, 
that certainly does not. Now because the Super Duty does have larger injectors and split shot, it means that it has a higher demand for oil. So as a consequence, the Super Duty has a 17 degree high pressure oil pump, whereas the OBS only has a 15 degree. Now that angle measurement is basically the angle of the swash plate. A higher angle generally means that there's a higher flow rate of oil that we can be produced by the higher angle in the Super Duty with the 17 degree. But certainly at that rate with a higher flowing high pressure oil pump, Super Duties, if you convert them from a split shot back to a single shot injector, which you can indeed do, means that they have a, a lot more power, a lot more capability to supply the oil to fire much bigger injectors. Now one of the common upgrades that you can do to a super to an OBS 7.3 is actually to upgrade the high pressure oil pump from the 15 to a 17 degree. In fact, they are, do just bolt right in. They're exactly the same. The main difference is just the internals and things of that sort. Now back to the fuel side of things. One thing that's kind of interesting to note is that while the OBS 7.3 only has a mechanical lift pump, whereas the Super Duty has the electric fuel pump, the OBS in some ways has a better fuel system because it has what's called a regulated return. It actually has a regulator here that allows the fuel in the cylinder head to go all the way through the cylinder head and then come back out. And what that does is it allows the air to naturally get purged from the system. Whereas the Super Duty actually has a deadhead system where basically all the fuel just comes in one side and it gets pushed out the back but there's no way for any air or anything of that sort to escape. So purging the system is air, of air is a little bit more challenging. Now for those of you guys who might be looking to get a whole lot of power out of your truck, one thing you need to be concerned about on 7.3s versus Super, uh, the Super Duty versus the OBS 7.3 is that the Super Duties later on in the year models had what are called powdered metal rods. Now that's a little bit of a different connecting rod that's inside the engine to connect, of course, the pistons to the crankshaft. I want to say somewhere around 2001 or so, the Ford, Ford actually switched from having the forged steel rods that you see in the OBS 7.3 that are actually capable of sporting, I've heard, in excess of 500 rear wheel horsepower. They switched somewhere around 2001 to these powdered metal rods that in theory were stronger, but turns out they're not quite as strong for higher horsepower applications. So as a consequence, Super Duty 7.3 with powdered metal rods, you generally only want to push upwards of about 400 rear wheel horsepower out of them before you really need to worry about snapping a connecting rod. Certainly that would be disastrous. Now folks, regarding the powdered metal rods, there actually were some 1999 and 2000 year model Super Duties that actually did come with the forged steel rods like the old body style 7.3s had. And I want to say later on down the road they had some forged steel rods sitting around that made their way into some later model Super Duty 7.3s as well. The best way that you can verify which connecting rod you have is, well, certainly to tear the engine down, but you can indeed verify that with the serial number that you can identify which rods you have. Now, given that the Super Duty 7.3 has a lot more capability to make more power, it actually makes more power from the factory compared to the old body style 7.3. Now, generally speaking, the 7.3, the OBS, from 94 to 95 only made 210 horsepower and about 425 foot-pounds of torque. 96 made 215 horsepower and up to 450 foot-pounds. In my year, the 97 was the most powerful of the OBS. We're at a whopping 225 horsepower and 450 foot-pounds of torque. Now for comparison, late 99 to 2000 model Super Duties had 235 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque. And I even maxed out in 01 to 03 that had 250 horsepower and 505 foot-pounds of torque. So this being an O2 Super Duty, it does have the highest output that came with the automatic transmission. But interesting thing to note is that given the state of automatic transmissions at the time not being as strong as the manuals, the manual option of the Super Duty actually was outfitted with 275 horsepower and 525 foot-pounds of torque as that ZF six-speed transmission could handle that a lot better. Now other thing to, to note with regards to the manual transmissions, now both of these are automatics, they don't have the manual, but a Super Duty generally came with a ZF six-speed transmission. So it has six speeds in the manual form, whereas the OBS only came with the ZF5, the five-speed manual transmission. Now since we are talking about transmissions, let's take a look at the transmission between the OBS and the Super Duty. Now the OBS 7.3 came with the E4OD automatic transmission. This is what I have right here that we're looking at. Whereas the Super Duty came with the 4R100. So right now we're underneath the Super Duty looking at the 4R100. And one thing that's kind of interesting to note 
is that you see that the transmission cases are pretty much darn near identical. And that's because the 4100 and E4OD are very, very closely related. In fact, the main differences between the two of these has to do with a lot of the internal workings of them. There are slightly different calibrations on them and slightly, slightly heavier duty internal components inside of the 4100, which makes it able to handle just a, a bit more torque and horsepower than the E4OD and generally makes it a little bit stronger as well. Now to wake, make our way to the very back of the truck, we can take a look at the rear differentials and this is where we'll find another subtle difference between the OBS and the Super D73. Now OBS 73s generally came with a 355 rear end gear that I've got in my truck or a 410 gear. Whereas the Super Duties only came with the 373, kind of more of a hybrid gearing between the 355 and the 410. Good for all around moving. Which also contributes to the fact that this Super Duty is a little bit faster than the OBS as well. One other interesting thing about the 4100s that you can see right there, it actually does have a drain plug in the bottom of the pan, whereas the E4OD does not. But if you ever want to upgrade your E4OD, you can actually directly interchange the drain pan from the 4100 to the E4OD. And I also believe that the 5R110 transmission used later on in the 6 liters is also compatible in terms of the transmission pan. But now for the question that everyone's been wondering, which one of these two trucks is faster? Well, let's take it for a spin and let's time their 0 to 60s and see which one we like better. All right guys, let's go ahead and fire up this Super D. We're gonna take it for a spin and see how it is. Wait to start light, of course, as always. And there we go. Got a nice quiet idle that I think is definitely a bit quieter than the OBS, but go figure that has to do with the split shot injectors and things of that sort. Now, I do think that the Super Duty does take a little bit longer to start in general compared to the OBS. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Super Duty does have the split shot injectors. Don't know for sure, but that's just my suspicions. All right, let's go ahead and take this truck for a spin and see how it runs. Wow, this thing does have a nice automatic locking system. Uh, as you start driving forward, reach a certain speed, this thing automatically locks. That's certainly nice. Now, I do think this Super Duty drives a little bit smoother than my OBS. Go figure it is a little bit newer. It feels a bit tighter and everything is steering. That's probably just because my truck's certainly a little bit worn and things of that sort. Now, the pedal is definitely a bit more touchy than my OBS. That really gets me wondering sometimes as to whether my pedal position sensor needs to be upgraded, but generally speaking, I think the Super Duty is just a little bit more sensitive because it's got a little bit more advanced tuning and things of that sort on it. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can drive the truck around, get it all warmed up, and then we'll run it through the paces. All right, let's time the series. Six, three, two, one, and go. Let's pedal floor on the Super Duty. Yoo-hoo! Definitely in a speed demon, but man, she still gets help. And 60. That was about 16.3 seconds. It's actually not all that bad compared to the OBS. I want to try that again. All right, so to be consistent here, we're just taking our foot straight down the floor as fast as we can. We're not waiting around or anything of that sort. I think you can get this truck to run a little bit quicker if you don't go straight pedal floor, but to be consistent, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Pedal floor. Now, there's definitely a lot quicker turbo response that you can feel in the Super Duty, I think, over the OBS, and it has to do with the tighter turbine housing. And that was 15.63 seconds. That's pretty good for a 7,000 pound truck or so. All right, guys, we're back in the OBS 7.3 after taking a spin in the Super Duty over there. Let's go ahead and fire the sucker up and see how it sounds. There we go, definitely a little bit louder on the startup, I think, and a little bit quicker on the startup as well. You know, I think that has to do with the fact that this has single shot injectors. So my truck's already pretty warm, so let's go ahead and fire her up. Now one other thing to note about my truck as well is that I do have an aftermarket exhaust in this, which that's going to help a little bit with flow compared to the Super Duty as well. But the Super Duty does also have a really good flowing downpipe. So from the factory, the old body style 7.3s have a rather restricted pancaked flat downpipe that doesn't really flow a whole lot of air compared to the Super Duty 7.3s. And so a popular upgrade for the old body style trucks is to upgrade that downpipe that really helps a lot with performance and things of that sort, especially if you're going with aftermarket tuning. So 
So you can definitely hear that turbo a little bit more, and that's just from my exhaust right there. Now, uh, getting back in the OBS, the pedal's definitely a little bit harder to push down, and this truck definitely has, it feels a little bit lighter almost in terms of driving. But I think that has to do with just kind of the design of the body. And also, my truck has leaf spring front suspension. A lot of your Super Duties have that as well, but that one I drove in particular was a two-wheel drive, and it had coilover suspension. Well, guys, after driving around the OBS from that Super one thing I can definitely note is that the old body style truck has a lot stiffer suspension, especially going over a lot of these bumps. I think the Super Duty has a little bit better design of suspension. That's designed to be a little bit cushier for you. So if ride comfort is one of those things that you're really into, you might want to look at the Super Duties over the OBS. All right, let's go. Three, two, one, and go. It's the floor of the OBS. Now with my aftermarket air intake, you can definitely hear a little bit of that whine. That's from the intake. Folks, there y'all have it. The comparison between the old body style 7.3 and the Super Duty 7.3 Power Stroke. Now, one thing to note too is that a lot of the things that were done on the Super Duty are basically just bolt-on items. So, like the intercooler, you can certainly add that onto the OBS, and you can certainly upgrade the turbo on both of these trucks as well. Injectors as well can be changed out, and same with transmission upgrades. So, at the end of the day, regardless of which truck you buy. They both probably equally have the same power potential. It just might cost a little bit more, do a little bit more work to get there from the old body style platform. So when it boils down to it, pick the truck that you like the most, the truck you like to drive the most, because that really is going to make a difference between how you like the truck in general. So I generally prefer the old body style just because I like the classic styling of the brick look on that thing. I think it looks cool. And Super Duty, if you like something a little bit more refined, a little bit nicer and things of that sort, rides a little bit better. Well, guys, that does it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope this helps you out and hope you enjoyed it. And y'all have a good one. Oh, and if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, R&D Diesel, you really should because your truck might break down and you'll be left on the side of the road and you still won't have anything fun to watch. Thanks for watching. Y'all stay tuned.